the Lord really put on my heart just the desire to make his name known somewhere else in the nations. And this internship was world class in that respect. Now I have the chance to use my engineering background for people and also to further the gospel. Going forward, working internationally, changed my mindset to think that no matter what happens, no matter what I can lose, Jesus is enough. Welcome back to another episode of On the Ground with Samaritan's Purse, where we take you to the front lines and behind the scenes of our work around the world. I'm your host, Christy Graham, and you just heard from some of our interns reflecting on their experiences this past summer. Each year, young men and women get the chance to learn firsthand what Samaritan's Purse is all about as they serve during an internship. They are stretched and introduced to new passions as they take on projects across the ministry. Some interns work internationally at one of our country offices or an affiliate office, and others work domestically at our headquarters in Boone, North Carolina. But wherever they land, it is intentionally prayed over, and our staff pour into them and love on them for however long they're a part of the team. I sat down with Charity, who is the Assistant Director of Campus Relations in the Human Resources Department at Samaritan's Purse. Charity is heavily involved with selecting interns every fall, summer, and spring. And we talked about how the internship program got started and her heart for serving in this role. The internship program started in 2013 and um, started out mainly as domestic interns, took on the international Mm -hmm. interns the following year. The initial program was started to more to minister to young people than our actual organization, Mm -hmm. which I think is really cool. Um, It was basically to give them an opportunity to see how they could use their unique skill set in a ministry setting. And so the program actually started because Franklin had experience when he was younger and went with Bob Pierce, Mm -hmm. different international um, sites with Samaritan's Purse, and that was kind of a catalyst for him and a time that changed his trajectory and what Mm -hmm. the Lord was calling him to. And because of that, he recognized young people coming right out of college or university, they are at a at a time in their life Mm -hmm. when it's really exciting and there's lots of question marks. So to be to be able to be in an environment where you could see what the Lord could do with that skill that He's given you or that gift that He's given you and redefine your calling or get your calling focused on international work um, and ministry most importantly. That was kind of the history of it was his life was was changed because of what Bob Pierce did in his life. So that was kind of the start, and it's just like developed. And I think that that experience has been repeated in so many people's lives by um, the stories I've heard of students who came as an intern, thought that they were going to go back to school and then go on to a corporation or, a, you know, making a lot of money, and then they recognize actually what's happening in ministry and for the kingdom is so much more important than maybe mm-hmm. that that big career that I thought I was going to go after. Mm-hmm. And it's also cool because the organization just does really cool work. It's never boring, and there's always things happening and changing. So I think that draws a lot of those students in. One of those interns who got the chance to travel internationally this summer was Laura. She served in Iraq, and I spoke with her about what it's like to trust the Lord in the Middle East. She also shared how going somewhere new and being challenged gave her a new, fresh perspective. I'm Laura Lennox. Um, I'm originally from South Africa. Um, moved to Belfast when I was 16 um, and then went to university in Wales, in Swansea. Um, so I graduated last summer and then I was looking for opportunities to work in international development. Um, it's always been in my heart to work in international aid um, with people in the most hurting parts of the world. And yeah, my internship was the GIS and reporting systems position and it was in the projects department. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know at first you, you were a little surprised on what you were studying. You know, it wasn't what you had planned, but I know God had a purpose. So tell me what you learned spiritually and professionally in this internship. God always has much bigger plans for us than we have mm-hmm. for ourselves. Um, one of my favorite things was devotions in the morning. Um, and sometimes like while praying, I would kind of just tune in and the room was just loud with so many people's prayers. And I just think that's such a special way to start the day, um, just equipping yourselves um, and just really just putting everything in God's hands. Um, 
But I think professionally, just learning as well, just to always keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, um, no matter what room you're in, if you're doing surveys out in the field, um, just always getting your strength from God um, and inviting him into it. Um, so I think that was a big thing. Um, and even just for myself during the internship, just seeing how much people with so much experience around me still invested into me um, and just noticed everyone around them. And I think that's something I would take into every future workplace to make sure other people feel that too. I learned a lot as well in terms of where God's calling me to. Um, so even though I was doing the GIS internship, um, my supervisor gave me projects where he used my strengths and my interests and GIS is quite niche and he sort of gave me projects that were bigger um, mm -hmm. that gave me different aspects of my previous studies and experiences that I could build on that definitely further developed um, just my understanding of what I want to go into in the future. That's awesome and I know um, you got to travel to Iraq and you got to see yeah. the Yazidi project even before you traveled, I know it was a project you were very interested in. You hadn't, you've got to see both sides, you know, how yeah. things are run here, but then what was it like to actually be on the ground? So it was a very special opportunity. Um, I didn't know I was going to go to Iraq when I applied. And so I was very excited, a little bit nervous, but also very excited. I was joining one of the other interns from the Middle East team, and he was doing work within the Khanke community in northern Iraq. Um, and they're currently looking to redirect resources to the Sinjar region. And so I started just by helping with developing a survey for that project and then was able then to go with um, and do the surveys on the ground, um, which was amazing. Um, so in headquarters in Boone, um, I definitely did feel the whole international feeling while you're around because there's so much experience around you mm -hmm. um, and working in the projects department as well. Like you just always see um, the different projects that are going on and you feel very connected to the rest of the world. And going to Iraq um, was able to work with beneficiaries. So we surveyed beneficiaries, staff, and then also just people in the local community. The staff that were working at that community centre, um, they just had so much hope. Um, so that was very special um, just to see people on the ground um, and the workings that flows out from headquarters out into the field. I know you've been changed in many ways, but are there is there something that the Lord taught you or maybe redirected you or even showed you a new path or a new purpose moving forward? After graduating, I was very ready to just go into the world of work. And I mm -hmm. thought it was simple. You know, I thought like you just graduate and get your dream job at the UN. Um, <laughs> but I very soon realized it's not exactly how it works. And so I have studied geography. Um, I specialized in refugee integration and um, social and political geographies. Um, and um, I sort of just wanted to help everyone in the world. Mm -hmm. um, but I realized I need a practical aspect to use in employment and so I was able to interview beneficiaries in Iraq and um, going into households and interviewing people that was a massive privilege being able to go into people's homes and hear their stories um, and to me it was like it was a lot more than just getting the results of the research it was also shining God's light in each home um, and just bringing his love into each space and encouraging people um, and just letting people feel heard as well. And even just interviewing people at headquarters, um, hearing their hearts behind the work. Um, it all just confirms me that I really want to go into storytelling. Um, and so I'm actually doing a master's in broadcast journalism in London. Oh, wow. um, so yeah, I definitely, I love hearing people's stories. I think there's so much around us that we don't even realize how much experience people have. Um, and so just finding those stories, hearing them, and then sharing them with people, um, mm. that was a big thing that came out for me. Wow. Wow. See, that's what I love. I feel like people come here, you know, with their dreams and their hopes, and a lot of times the Lord, you know, either opens their eyes to something different, and that's why I love how your supervisor even, you know, kind of moved you around within the department to allow you to see different aspects, and I love the way that the Lord led you. and. I guess if somebody's thinking about the internship or even thinking about, yeah, stepping out in faith and obedience, what would you say to someone that God is stirring their heart towards something? You know, I know it's a risk and it's scary and you came to the United States for the first time, but what would you say um, did you learn from that obedience? Um, I would say just 
trust God. I know that sounds so cliche, um, but honestly, just trusting and just, I mean, God is the lamp to our feet and the light to our path um, and just taking one step at a time, just keeping your eyes fixed on Jesus. I think with your eyes fixed on Jesus, um, everything just falls into place um, and he picks us up when we fall. Um, And so, yeah, just trusting his guidance. The internship program has grown so much over the years, and I love that now more and more people have been called to this ministry, making the jump from intern to full-time staff. So it has grown and developed to actually be a great pipeline for the organization as a whole. And part of that is to basically train them up, help them recognize what opportunities are on the field and or at our headquarters and then utilize them throughout the organization. And we actually have close to 100 employees wow. who were former interns, which to me really warms my heart because that, you know, that wasn't the initial goal of the program. But to see how the Lord has used it in so many incredible ways to now have those individuals serving across the ministry. And now we have 10 years worth of bench. We're pulling people who have experience now, and maybe they went on and did something else, but now they're here serving. Mm-hmm. And It's really cool to see that happen, see how Mm -hmm. the Lord can tie all of that together. Mm -hmm. I know. And I feel like it is such a reciprocal relationship. They offer so much to the ministry. I think we all learn something from them and their supervisors, but then the staff here pours into them. So they are mentored well and not just in what they're doing for work, but beyond. So I guess maybe even talk about the application process. Um, We need all different, I think some people think, oh, I would, uh, they'd never use me. I mean, we right. need wash, we need communications, we need, Absolutely. I mean, all different aspects. But mm-hmm. what I love, they're not always assigned their actual niche. Right. So sometimes they're stretched in other ways. Why is that? Yes. So we often have a lot of applicants, mm-hmm. which has been, that's definitely from the Lord, just seeing how many people are interested and want to serve. And through that process, the goal is not to find just the skill set or mm-hmm. the um, the degree or license or whatever. It's actually the most important part. And the thing we're looking for the most is the calling and the focus on the gospel and interest in long-term ministry or, or even just interest in serving the Lord. So we might actually say, this person is a really good fit for the organization. Where can we place them mm-hmm. instead of who has the engineering degree and and just putting them in there? Now, we also have really technical roles. So there are mm-hmm. some where we're kind of on the hunt to find that student who has the finance degree and also has that ministry heart and the calling. Mm -hmm. So it's unique. Some of it's placement based on um, what what our needs are and who could potentially fit that need. And then other parts are the really technical, which it's fun to see them use that technical skill set in a way that is – it's – they maybe never thought that they would actually use that skill set. So it's really fun to see how the internship – now feeds into our apprenticeship program and then into full-time roles. And that's been part of the vision that's kind of come through from leadership. And it's it's been incredible to see it flow the whole way. So each term, mm-hmm. we get a, a new batch of interns for the summer. Mm-hmm. Um, how many did we have domestically and internationally with Samaritan's Purse? Yes. So around 80 to 90 every year. And we've actually, since the beginning of the internship, we've had more than 700 interns, which is wow. really exciting to, to be to that point. And to have hit the 10-year mark is exciting for the ministry. I think. And I know you get to know these interns really well. Mm-hmm. How do they encourage and inspire you? Because yeah. I think they... They're an exciting generation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Honestly, their creativity, their joy and excitement, mm-hmm. they're, um, they're always just such a blessing to be around. I feel like the whole ministry just perks up during mm-hmm. the summer when interns arrive because they're excited about doing ministry and they feel just thrilled to be a part of the organization. That, I think, has brought me back for so many years as just continuing to bring these young individuals in and then help them see the bigger calling on their Mm -hmm. life and where the Lord is really leading them. Because honestly, most of our interns are in school, and they've kind of been told what to do next Mm -hmm. every single stage of their life, and they're Mm -hmm. actually just coming into adulthood when it's no longer their parents' decision. Mm -hmm. It's no longer the decision of the school system, or it's actually their decision now. And so it's really exciting to be 
at that stage with them and to say, hey, you've done all of this. The Lord has brought you to this point, and now let's see where he's leading you next. So that part, I think, makes me most excited about it. And then um, just my prayer for them is it's it's a hard world. And honestly, university campuses are some of the, the hardest places to be believers. So in a way, I think our internship is a sort of a retreat for them. They are learning professional skills. They're learning and using their um, degrees in really awesome ways. But it's also a time for them to be a part of a broader Christian community from all around the world. Our interns come from everywhere, um, not just the U.S. And so to all come together, be here, serve together, be a part of devotions and and ministry opportunities, that is that sends them back onto their campuses ready and on fire for doing ministry again. It's Marin's Purse, you know, as the Lord allows us to grow and, and have opportunities that we don't anticipate every year, you know, we we need more people. And I say all the time, you know, the harvest is plentiful, mm-hmm. but the workers are few. What would you say to people maybe listening? Um, they say, oh, I have a college niece or nephew, or mm-hmm. I didn't know about this program. How can they get involved? You mentioned there's three terms, mm-hmm. but what, what can someone do? Um, what should they be looking for? Yeah. So when we're looking at our application pool, like like we've talked about in the past, it is it can be a big applicant pool, but honestly, the Lord will have the right people here who mm-hmm. who are called to be here. And so my biggest encouragement is if if an individual feels like the Lord is calling them to be here, to keep applying and keep looking at the website. So if they're applying and not getting in, some things that that help build out a resume are international experience, mm-hmm. ministry involvement, um, any kind of degree work that, that can relate to the work that we're doing, because there's a lot of different technical skill sets we look for. But the biggest thing is praying and continuing to pursue that door that they feel like the Lord is mm-hmm. asking them or guiding them to, to go through. Mm-hmm. I know I talk with many interns and many, you know, it's their second or third (laughs) uh, summer that they've applied Mm -hmm. and they finally get it. And that happens even with staff. I mean, there Mm -hmm. are staff that say, I applied multiple times to, you know, and again, it comes down to God's timing, you know, and be praying that he will shut and open doors. And and like you said, be faithful where you are. God has another opportunity Mm -hmm. for you this summer. And I encourage people that just because you say no, it doesn't mean no forever. Exactly. But it is worth, I think applying again and again. Exactly. And And lots of times we'll hear the stories from the interns and they'll express that saying, Mm -hmm. I applied two times. And now that I'm here, I recognize Mm -hmm. the Lord didn't have me here at that time for a reason and was actually building a skill Mm -hmm. then that I'm using now. And that for us is the, it's exciting to say, okay, now let's take those skills, use them some more and develop them out. Yeah. Nothing is wasted um, when we're serving the Lord. Now I want you to hear more from several of our interns from this summer who served in a variety of roles all around the world. And like Laura, they were stretched in many ways. Our podcast correspondent got the chance to ask some of our interns what they've learned and how the internship has impacted them spiritually. My name is Jared. I was the program's intern in Liberia, West Africa this summer. And my role consisted of a lot of different things, but primarily monitoring and evaluation, so making sure that our projects, what we said we were going to do, um, was being implemented well. And then also a lot of uh, strategic planning and um, preparing the office for the future, so trying to create new projects and brainstorm new projects, as as well as just... Uh, um, ensure that our current projects are going well, making sure that our partnerships with local churches and local organizations are thriving and um, seeing ways we can improve together as a, as a partnership. It's the first time I've ever been in Africa. Liberia is a place that's very torn apart in the past by war and the Ebola epidemic that's happened uh, in 2014, but uh, the gospel is moving so vibrantly in that country. Um, I got the opportunity to work in the prisons in Liberia and see dozens of people come to faith and grow in their faith. How did this internship impact you spiritually? It was, it was really impactful. Um, going overseas, seeing my fellow national staff and beneficiaries who uh, have so little and have been persecuted in the past, uh, and yet seeing the joy that they have in their faith and how much Jesus means to them and how Jesus is enough for them no matter what's really inspired me going forward working internationally um, 
changed my mindset to think that no matter what happens, no matter what I can lose, Jesus is enough. I'm Brianna and I'm an intern at the WASH department. So I've always loved engineering and just the idea of helping people that actually need it. And Samaritan's Purse does a great job of just like incorporating both of those things. And it's kind of, people say it's the gospel first and then like how else can our professions and our jobs and skill sets work into that, which I really loved because now I have the chance to use my engineering background for people and also to further the gospel, which is awesome. <laughs> I've never really worked with an organization that's so gospel focused and Christian. So I just honestly get so excited um, even getting to work on the machines and just see that the work I'm doing here will help someone else. And it's such a cool avenue to be able to just spread the gospel because people are seeing you and they're like, why are you helping me? And it's just kind of a cool way to say like, I'm helping you because the Lord loved me and he helped me so much more first. So that's kind of just everyone's heart here is that way. And it's really cool to learn from people and see their heart and the work that they do with engineering. My name is Joshua Ide, and I was a finance intern in Niger this summer. I had the awesome opportunity of being a support staff to the finance team that was there. And my role was more specifically working on seeing where the money was coming from, um, making sure we had all the proper documentation. To be able to see where the money is going and where it's coming from is important for our donors and then also to make sure our beneficiaries are getting the absolute best quality service that we can provide for them. So why did you decide to intern with Samaritan's Purse? Well, being a young Christian in the world, uh, I think God really put on my heart that this was a unique time in my life that I could really use to serve him in a way that I might not be able to when I'm older and less able. And I was actually discovered this internship through one of my family members. And at the time, I didn't think being in an international con context mm -hmm. was something I would excel in. Um, but the Lord really put on my heart just the desire to make his name known somewhere else in the nations. And this internship was world-class in that respect, really giving me an opportunity to utilize my skills and my abilities for that very purpose and really seeing the effect that Christian community and a organization that centers on the gospel can really have a strong effect on places of the world that might be struggling resource-wise or any other aspect that they might need help in. This was actually my first international experience and it was just a really awesome experience getting to work with national staff there um, and seeing their hearts for the gospel and also for the people in their own community. And so just being able to be a part of something like that and being able to dedicate the abilities that God has given to a greater calling was really impactful. Thank you for joining us. I hope that this episode encouraged you as you heard the heart behind our internship program. I personally loved getting to know so many of our interns this summer and hearing how God called them into ministry. I was also impressed by their focus on the gospel. I hope that hearing these stories encouraged you as you think about this next generation of future leaders. And as we close, I just want to share a few scriptures. Um, again, I enjoyed meeting these interns, and, and I love that Franklin desired to have this program because it was around this age that the Lord captured his heart. He surrendered his life to Jesus and, and mentors and people that showed him uh, the kingdom work around the world. It changed his trajectory. His life was changed by the gospel and by people investing in him. And so I want to read uh, Matthew 6, 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be provided to you. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And I, I want to read another familiar passage, Proverbs 3, 5 through 7. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. This will be healing for your body and strengthening for your bones. And again, I just loved watching these interns that they trusted the Lord with all their heart. They truly desired to hear from him on where he wants them next. And they have skills and desires to serve 
But again, as they came together this summer, they were challenged, and the Lord showed them uh, many where he wants them. And so if you know a college student that might be interested, I encourage you to share this episode with them. Tell them about this program. Uh, Samaritan's Purse uh, needs every specialty and skill set to make this ministry possible. Uh, We need engineers and accountants and web designers and nearly everything in between. Uh, But the biggest thing we want is is people with a heart for the gospel, people that want to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. And so, again, God can use all of us. He wants obedience. And so, um, again, I hope that this episode challenges you. I love how Laura Lennox said, God always has bigger plans for us than we have for ourselves. And that is so true, and that's why it takes this daily desire. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your understanding and seek Him for what He wants you to do each day. Thanks again for listening and have a great week.